Well, as we start this afternoon, THB 11 is following developments from an early morning train derailment in North Little Rock. The images you see now on your screen show the moments after train cars turned off the tracks. Here's a closer look at the scene from earlier today. Our crews were there within minutes and according to fire crews, there are no reported injuries at this time. However, officials tell us a total of 19 cars were derailed with four being empty. They wasted no time assessing the situation and are now working to clean up the damages. At this time, UP is now working on correcting the incident and they're going to uh, disconnect, move box cars, try and stand some upright. We can confirm this is not a hazardous, hazardous situation. As we learn more, we'll work to bring you the very latest updates online and on air at THV11.com. Well, happy Thursday. We do have a weather impact alert today for excessive heat across central Arkansas Fro from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. We're currently within that window. That's where some heat alerts across the state are in effect. So that's how long our weather impact alert is lasting today. That'll be in effect tomorrow as well. We'll talk more about why later on in the show. But for today, some things you need to know is try to limit your time outdoors. Make sure you're staying hydrated. If you are outside, drink more water and more fluids than you think you'll need and wear lightweight, loose fitting clothing. Here's those heat alerts across the state. You see more of those eastern and northeastern counties under a excessive heat warning and then central into southern and southwestern Arkansas under more of a heat advisory. Bottom line heat indices between 105 and 115 are expected today and already we're seeing some heat indices in the triple digits. So feeling like 104 in the capital city, Searcy feeling like 106 to our south Camden feeling like 100. It's going to be a hot one out there. Make sure you're staying safe. I have that next check in of your forecast coming up in a few. This afternoon, we know more on what's on November's ballot could look like, starting with an amendment that allows voters to decide the fate of a casino in Polk County. That's being made possible thanks to a move by the local group, local voters in charge. Their goal is to put the choice of building the casino in the hands of voters. Developer group Cherokee Nation Entertainment had already secured the final gaming license, but now the group could be met with a major roadblock depending on what people decide this November. What it boils down to is the fact, you know, some communities want to embrace the casino and the possibilities of those hold. Other communities may have questions or reservations about a casino being present in their community and, uh, and may decide that it's not a good fit. Both sides are expecting to face legal challenges as the amendment claims it's spot on the November ballot. As that initiative is now locked and secured on the ballot, another is still fighting to claim its spot. The medical marijuana amendment would make the drug more available. However, it still needs about 14,000 signatures to qualify. The group submitted the amendment with enough signatures to give them a cure period, meaning they have 30 days to find the rest of the needed signatures before receiving the stamp of approval. And with that, the state Supreme Court is still deciding on the Arkansas abortion amendment. That measure was submitted with over 102,000 signatures, most of which thrown out due to a submission error. The high court later ruled for all signatures to be counted and we're expected to learn more on its fate in the next week. Staying with local elections, the filing period is underway for candidates hoping to join the Little Rock Board of Directors. One name already down to run for office is Blake Tierney. We learn he already has $30,000 ready to use for his campaign. With the elections inching closer by the day, the Pulaski County Clerk is working to make sure people dot their I's and cross their T's before heading to the polls. So we want to make sure that people check their voter registration, update it if they need to. If there are any 17 year olds that are out there and will be 18 by November 5th, we want them to come on out and get registered. Anyone wanting to run as a candidate will have until next Wednesday at noon to file. As for voters, you'll need to have your registration completed no later than October 7th. Former President Donald Trump's attempt to win over black voters was met uh, by negative reactions after bringing the vice president's ethnicity into question. Bradley Blackburn shares more on Trump's remarks and how people are responding. 
former President Donald Trump stoked controversy in an interview with black journalists Wednesday when he was asked whether Vice President Kamala Harris was a DEI or diversity, equity and inclusion hire. You believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is only on the ticket because she is a black woman. She was always of Indian heritage and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. Trump doubled down Thursday posting a picture of Harris with her Indian born mother. While Harris's mother was Indian, her father was Jamaican and she attended Howard University, a historically black college. Kamala Harris. She dismissed the comments during a rally with a black sorority in Houston Wednesday night. It was the same old show. The divisiveness and the disrespect. Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, who is on Harris's running mate shortlist, said that Trump is running scared. I think those are the comments of a desperate, scared old man who is, uh, over the last week especially, has been you know, having his butt kicked you know, by a experienced prosecutor. And I think he's worried. At a rally in Kelly's home state, Trump's running mate defended the former president while taking a shot at Harris. Kamala Harris is a phony who caters to whatever audience is in front of her. Senator J.D. Vance is working to shift the focus back to differences over immigration policy with a tour of the southern border Thursday. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. The Pulaski County Special School District is going the extra mile to focus on meeting health demands as they prepare to welcome students back. They're doing so with an all new school based health center. We first told you about these plans months ago. Now we're just under 24 hours away from watching the clinic open its doors. Coming with it, services ranging from primary care, immunizations, lab work, and much more. And it doesn't stop there, as district leaders say the new center could lead to improvements inside the classrooms. We're excited because when you have kids that are healthy, staff healthy, they come to work, they come to school. The clinic can be found right behind Mills Middle School, but will be open for use for the entire district. The official ribbon cutting gets underway at 1030 tomorrow morning. We're also seeing more schools adopt a new policy that restricts cell phone usage during class. The Searcy School District becoming the latest to agree to the new plan. With the restrictions soon going into place, students will have to put their phones in a pouch during school hours. It's all part of the governor's newest initiative. With school right around the corner, the district superintendent tells us they're only moving forward with the plans after getting majority support. As you might imagine, teachers were about 99% in favor of some form of restriction and parents were about 60-40. And so uh, we feel like that it is safe enough to uh, pursue and, and continue to go down that path. The district is still working out a few kinks, like when students can and cannot use their phones. But with mental health being their top mission, they're calling on parents to help with limiting screen time. And don't forget, we're just a few days away from tax free weekend. It happens as soon as the clock strikes midnight Saturday morning. It'll last until 1259 Sunday night. Places like Walmart say they have extra supplies, clothes and any essentials in stock. To find out what qualifies for tax free, find this story on our website. That is THV11.com. In just a few hours from now, Little Rock will hear from members of the public for help with plans for Hyman Park. Before 2019, it was used as a golf course before being changed to disc golf. Later this evening, the Little Rock Parks and Rec Department is inviting you to one of their meetings aimed at discussing the new idea of turning it into a space for mountain biking. If you'd like to voice your input, the meeting starts at 530 at the Hyman Park Clubhouse. Also today, celebrations are happening at the Ralph Bunch neighborhood in Benton. People there will gather for the grand opening of the newly renovated community center. Repairs first started last year to fix plumbing issues. The facility opens its doors at 2 o'clock this afternoon, and our team will be there so you can have the very latest tonight at 5 and 6. More Americans are at risk for developing dementia. If you don't know the signs, just ahead, how early detection could save you in the long run. 
And that weather impact alert continuing until 8 p.m. due to excessive heat. Heat indices upwards of 105 expected between now and that early evening mark. I'll have that full forecast coming up in five minutes.